In this example, we're going to evaluate another definite integral. Um, for this one, uh, we've got this 3 that's right here. That's just a constant times that function. If I'm going to find that antiderivative, that constant uh, can sort of be factored out. So I can just rewrite this as 3 times the integral from pi over 3 to pi over 2 of cosine x dx. Now, when, I, when I'm taking the antiderivative then, um, and that's what I need to do to evaluate a definite integral, um, I'm going to need something then where the derivative is equal to cosine. So I'm not taking the derivative of cosine. I'm taking the derivative of something else to give me cosine. So I'm really saying the derivative of what equals cosine x. Well, I know it, it's probably either sine or negative sine. So what happens? What's the derivative of sine? Well, yeah, the derivative of sine is just cosine. So that's what I'm looking for. So derivative of sine is cosine. That's fine. So I want to evaluate that from pi over 3 to pi over 2. So the 3, again, can sort of be factored out. It's going to be part of both terms. So I get 3 times the sine of pi over 2 minus the sine of pi over 3. So remember, pi over 2 is the same angle as 90 degrees. So if I look at the unit circle, pi over 2 is up here, and that point has an x-coordinate of 0 and a y-coordinate of 1. So the x-coordinate is the cosine and the y-coordinate is the sine. So, oh, let's see, I missed my minus here. So back here, I want the sine of pi over 2. That's going to be the y-coordinate at this on the unit circle here. So that's going to be 1. For pi over 3, that's sort of like 60 degrees. Uh, let me do the red here. Now that point has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate and 60 degrees and 30 degrees, here's how I think about it. I know that one of them is one half and one of them is square root of three over two. And I never remember which is which. So I think of it this way. If I'm at this angle, you know, what's, what's bigger here, the x coordinate or the y coordinate? Well, I'm not going over very much, but I'm going up a lot. So the x coordinate is smaller than the y coordinate. So that means the x coordinate has to be one over two and the y coordinate has to be square root of three over two because the square root of three is bigger than one. And so again, the x-coordinate is my cosine, the y-coordinate is my sine. So when I come back here, then the sine of pi over 3, that's going to be, oops, that's not what I wanted. That's going to be, well, that's fine, I can do it in red. That's going to be square root of 3 over 2. And so when I distribute, 3 times 1 is 3. 3 squared of 3 over 2. That would be totally fine. If you want, um, we could put it as one fraction. And so we could write it as 6 minus 3 squared of 3 all over 2. So we could either give that as the answer or we could give that as the answer. Either one would be fine.